Welcome back, welcome back. All right, so today I'll be beating Pokemon Scarlet in the least amount of battles. Here are the rules. No battling the random trainers in the overworld or wild Pokemon that aren't part of the story. No healing in battle and no extra XP from candies on the ground or from camps and sandwiches. So first we make our trainer. Whoa, the resemblance is uncanny. So Clavo shows up to our house and brings the three starters. Then we go for a walk with the little guys. So Quaxley's my favorite out of the three, and the Sprigatito line's my favorite as a whole. But I'm choosing Foy Coco. Torch Song is just really, really, really good. And the first two gyms are Bug and Grass. Time for the nickname. <coughs> all right, all right, listen, most YouTubers are genuine, then start shilling later. You hate to see that, so I'll just start shilling right now. After this, we have our first battle of the game against Nimona. This is a very special battle because nothing's different. After this, we have battle two, the catch tutorial. For random wild encounters, I'll be running away, but since that's not an option in this battle, we get our second team member, Lechong. See guys, it's not just a solo run. All right, so after this, we jump off a cliff and find our legendary lizard dog getting bullied by two hound hours. We give them a sandwich, and can I just say that our sandwich from our mom fully powers Coridon, but five Herba Mystica sandwiches couldn't even do this. What is in this sandwich? Anyways, so Coridon just gets bullied by hound hours in this section, and I mean, I get it. I hated horde battles in X and Y also. So after slowly walking behind Coridon, we get to our next battle. N never mind. So Crydon goes boing vert and just gets us out of the cave. So next we meet Arvin and naturally we beat up his squirrel. Not much to say about the battle so far. He tells us to take the lizard dog because he's sad his mom chose the family dog in the divorce instead of him. We get to the first Poke Center and here we can use the mystery gift feature. I mean we technically got this Pikachu without battling. Yeah, I'm not actually going to use it since it's not an option for someone attempting this years down the line. All right, battle four of the run. This is where things get intense. So Nimona now has two Pokemon and uses the gimmick of the game, Terrastalization. So the thing is, you can lose the battle and the game will continue on. But with how limited the XP is going to be, I need to win this. So after the first loss, I went searching for an orange berry and gave it to Fue Coco. After this, it's just me grinding attempts, hoping for crits and burns. But finally, after 10 plus attempts, I gave up and went with another strategy. Instead, I used a Chesto Resto strategy. So Fue Coco spams Amber on Sprigatito until it fades. Then we swap to Lechonk and hit a vital tackle. We bring back Fue Coco. We have enough health to tank a Thundershock so we can use that rest. Get back to full, now let's burn this rat. There we go, battle four is done. All it took was Chesto Resto. Next, we're welcome to the largest city in Paldea, Mesagosa. I pick up a charcoal and a quick claw from the deli bird presence and head for school. On the way, I'm stopped by two kids peer pressuring a girl into leaving her room. So I know I need to put a stop to it. The first battle's super easy. After though, we're given a Terra Orb, which will be a huge help. Battle six is just two embers also, but sparkly. We actually go to school this time, where we meet back up with Arvin to go find some plans. We also get a phone call from the Phantom Thieves to steal Team Star's heart and save the school. After this, we had to meet up with Nimona and the region's champion, introducing Victory Road, aka the gym challenge. We time skip past the school part of school and the treasure hunt begins. Our dog wakes up and the tutorial section is basically over. After this, we have a choice of which way to go. But since we got Fue Coco, yeah, bug type gym leader it is. Nothing really of note happens on the way there. Why would it? We can't battle. So I found a shiny, and this is a dilemma, people. Do I dare ruin the sanctity of my run for this pink, round, adorable little guy? Okay, before you guys get mad, I used the event Pikachu, so my actual party didn't get any XP for the battle. That doesn't completely invalidate this run in your guys' minds, hopefully. We've arrived in Cortondo. The gym challenge is easy, no battle required. Time to battle Katie. She has three bugs, so my strategy is easy. Fire beat bug. I take a double kick from Nimble, one shot with Ember, Tarantula survives and hits me with assurance. Finally, Teddy Ursa comes in and Fue Coco is down. I'm screwed. So I grinded some attempts and learned some stuff. Tarantula and Fue Coco actually have a speed tie, meaning 
I'm screwed. <laughs> I also learned Tarantula doesn't one-shot Lechonk. So I lost over and over again. So I said, that's it, time for some more firepower. I went on a journey, meaning climb. Uh, so I visited a bunch of towns, Artisan, Lavincia, Zapicoco, Zapi, Zapico, Zapico. I finally got what I wanted, Flamethrower. I also grabbed some leftovers. Thank you, Scarlet and Violet, for technically being overworld. So after all this, it's finally time for batch one out of 18. So I returned to Katie's gym stronger, wiser, forcing me to draw a great conclusion. Fire beats a bug. So I used flamethrower protect, flamethrower over and over again. Was this lame? Yes, but I was three hours in and have zero gym batches. And there we go, batch one. Also, can I just say the theme of this town never made sense to me? She's a pastry chef, so you'd think she'd use a Fido. Nope, she's a bug trainer. And the gym challenge is hitting a giant olive through a maze. <sighs> Next up, I found a rock. Yup, just a rock. Oh, no, it's moving. Cloth, our first Titan Pokemon. So I taught Lechonk Bullet Seed and headed to battle. First things first, I get a burn off, chipping away at it until it eventually ran away. Honestly, I was really scared, but it didn't use any rock type moves. Cloth seemingly went down to take some supplements, surging with the power of pre-workout. Luckily, Arvin and his shelter showed up to back me up and take it. Unfortunately, the pre-workout gave the cloth the power to lift large rocks and the ability anger shell. So on my first attempt, I was probably going to win, but I decided to reset because XP is too valuable and I don't want to waste it, yada, yada, yada. Cloth seems to like going back and forth on who it attacks, swapping its target each turn. It's probably a coin flip who it attacks though. So with decent luck, me and Arvin beat our first Titan. So each Herma Mystica gives us a new ability, in this case, a dash. I decided to go with the Grass Gym next, where I meet my favorite Stalker before taking on the Gym Challenge. So originally I thought I'd have to battle at least one some Flora, but nope. Time to take on Brassius. I really hope for the sake of his ankles, I win this first try. Unfortunately, Petalo uses Sleep Powder, but it can't really do any damage and one shot. Next, we have Small of and one shot. So, Sudowoto is actually gonna be a problem, and this time we get one shot. Unfortunately, Stab Rock type move just kills. So, attempt two, I just wanna see if he'd use Trailblaze. So Blaze boosted Flamethrower brings Pseudo Wudo down to sturdy, and Lechonk gets one shot by Trailblaze, leaving a few ways to win. A 10% chance to burn, a 10% chance to miss Rock Throw, or a 23% chance for Quick Claw. Seems like the odds are pretty good. Two or three more attempts at best. The problems are that Petalil has a 50-50 chance of using Mega Drain or Sleep Powder. A Sleep Powder miss is the best case scenario. Then there's a speed tie between Fake Coco and Smollett. Then Pseudo Udo's Rock Throw seems to do somewhere between 42 to 48 out of Fake Coco's 49 HP. All right, attempt nine. I make it a Pseudo Udo with full HP. He hits his Rock Throw and no burn. Then I switch to Lechonk. Trailblaze one shots, but we know a rock throw is coming since Sudo Wuda always uses it on Foy Coco. We survive, and finally the Quick Claw, LeChuck with the massive tackle! And as a reward, we get our first evolution, Crocolore. Next is the Sky Titan at the top of Mount something. I, I don't think they named this mountain. But as you can see, the Stork is delivering newborn rocks to Mama Mountain. I noticed it was raining, so I decided to reset. And now it's time to face Bombardier. What a design! Gross. So this battle went really well for me. I will wisp first turn, then I protect a rock throw. And for some reason, this was the only rock throw I ever went for. So after you beat Bombardier, this man doesn't wait. He just starts chowing down. Everyone knows you're not supposed to order food before everyone shows up. So now Arvin arrives and just feels all awkward as everyone's already eating. But, but more importantly, I didn't get to heal. So I start off with a patent to protect. Proceed to miss a Will-O-Wisp. Honestly, I just let Nackley and Arvin carry me to victory. Smackdown just does a ton of damage. I drop to one HP, but Nackley clutches the fight. Inside, we eat another sandwich. As you'd expect, the Sky Titan gives Coridon the power to swim. We also meet Arvin's sick dog. S sick as in it's dying. And that's the badge number four. So next, I went to the dark type team star base and easily beat the grunt outside and we can't challenge them with two Pokemon. So that blows. 
I did see this coming though, but fine. I'll just challenge the fire base. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, uh, I kind of figured I needed three Pokemon even before I started the run. This was more about just getting some XP, but the fire guy beat me anyway, so what does it even matter? Let's go beat the third gym. But first, let's grab Dig. Before we can take on the gym, we have to battle the Mona. So I protect on a Howl and then miss a Wisp on a second Howl. Wow, and then I close the game. Okay, let's Wisp first and dodge a Roth throw. I am terrified by this setup machine of a puppy Pokemon, but we land our digs. It was never in doubt. I decide to not test my static luck, but Palmy digs instead. We have the counterplay though. Protect. It charges. We dig. Get a crit. But we're paralyzed. All Nimona has left is our starter. Despite our para flinching and the rain, we beat Nimona. Next we get to collab with Iono and play Where's Waldo. There's so much to learn about content creation. Iona's my favorite gym leader, and the only way to prove it is by beating her tier 3 subs. On the second go around, I go for Wisp and Terra Flamethrowers for a pretty easy win. Unfortunately, for the second battle, I'm not healed. And my Terra isn't back. The Tynamo is an easy one shot, but I get paralyzed. Flaffy keeps using Cotton Spore, which is great but I can move for two turns, which uh, is not great. Though, through some scary paralysis, we get the win and find Waldo. I generally don't know how I win after struggling so much against the gym trainers. The show must go on. Terra Flame through a White's Watchroll off the face of the earth. Belly Bolt, however, is way bulkier and has Water Gun. So I'll cut to the chase, we lose. <laughs> I decide Dig is not good on Crocolore, Flamethrower is basically always better. I opt for Yawn. Round two, Iono farms me for clips. This time I yawn belly bowl, just hoping Yawn plus Protect can carry me. It does it. So instead I decided to scrounge up some extra XP. So let's go after the Steel Titan, Earthworm. I'm under leveled, so let's see how this goes. Yeah, you're gonna need those healing herbs. Righteous Roots, S steroids. So Arvin joins in to terrorize this worm, like only a fledgling psychopath would. He starts with a crit headbutt, again, but that can't save this earthworm. He also hits himself twice in confusion, so yeah, that, that was kind of sad. But Lechaga balls into Oinkaloin. That sucks for Lechaga, but the stat boost gonna come in handy. Arvin calls Earthworm a little cutie after we thrash that thing. You can tell his trauma is starting to affect him. Amazing storytelling game freak. So for beating the worm, you guessed it, we get big jump. So before our rematch with Iono, I got some better fire moves and body slam for Oinkaloin. Attempt three, I can't lose this time. Let's see how Belly Bull hand... Oh, par paralysis? My strategy at this point is just pray for good luck. And things are going well. We got him down to half before going down. We outspeed and finish off Belly Bolt. We got paralyzed again and missed the Fire Blast. Fire Blast is a one shot, which is huge, but you gotta hit it. All right, time for her zero weakness ace and double power stab hex. I feel good after this run. Just need a bit of luck. Oinkaloin solos Belly Bolt with Dig Protect leftovers, putting us in good position for Luxio. And we miss for the third straight time. We get our head off and avoid Para. 43 health and a dream. I'm hoping for Confuseray and us not hitting ourselves. As you'd expect, we hit ourselves. Charge Beam does 28 damage. Protect plus Yawn means Sleepy Miss Magius. We need to win while Miss Magius is asleep. We need it to not wake up. <laughs> yeah. Gym match three. Now it's time to figure out what's next. I go to the desert to find stardust and star pieces and sell all my useless items, giving me money to buy vitamins for my Pokemon. I go with special attack and speed for Crocolore while opting for attack and HP on Oinkaloin. I ran out of money and only got to max out Crocolore though. After this, I go to school to write my midterms. These give you XP candies. You might say, you can't use these, comma, but let's go back. Extra, extra XP, XP from, from candies, candies on the, on the ground. ground. Now, if it makes you guys feel better, I won't be giving any to Oinkalin or Crocolore. Anyways, we head to Cascarafa, where we're tasked with giving the gym leader his wallet. Finally, something we can do. 
Before we return the wallet, I want to see how we stack up against a certain big guy. So here we meet our fourth titan, Great Tusk, running through the desert, exploring, and just seeing this gigantic Donphan looking thing walking towards me. Easily the coolest part of the main game for me. So Great Tusk is level 45, which is more than our two Pokemon combined, but at least it doesn't have a ground type move. Wow, that rapid spin did a lot. We managed to get him to sleep though. If he can just sleep for one more turn, we win. And 21 levels lower, we cheese our way to victory. Unfortunately for the second fight, it's gonna have stomping tantrum. But who knows, maybe Arvin can just carry us like he does every time. A powered up level 45 ground type. How bad could this go? Yeah, th that's about right. Attempt two was that definition of insanity that people like to say, you know the one, doing the same thing, expecting different results, yada, yada, yada. We protect the first turn and get a yawn off. On the second turn, it's bedtime for Great Tusk. Things are starting to look promising. I decided to go with Flamethrower since Govillain can make up for the extra damage of Fire Blast. Or so I thought. The difference in this thing's special defense compared to last battle is night and day. I protect and possibly throw the game away as he stays sleeping. But as long as Arvin just clutches, we win. And man, I'd hate to battle him. That man is good at Pokemon. So we beat this Pokemon higher level than our mods combined without taking a single hit. So the circus music starts playing. We toast some sandwiches, feed our dogs, and go on our merry way. Now, with the power of flight or like slow falling, I don't know, gliding in this game just feels worse than Legends Arceus. So we meet Kofu talking to himself, not noticing me right in front of him. I choose not to give him his wallet since he's clearly in his own world. We meet him in the auction house where his student just starts a battle because, and he beats us. Bad omen for the gym. Round two, I decide to use protect to get more recovery on Oinkaloid. Though Floatzel lands a really unfortunate crit. It's time, no more Oinkaloid sitting in the back. He hard carries us to victory. So we take all of this man's money as punishment for challenging us. Anyone else watch that show where they bid on storage units? Anyways, this is not like that at all. We get the dude a seaweed, and it's time to take him on. I grab Hyper Voice first though. I love that since Sword and Shield, you can relearn TM moves anytime you want. Inside the building, we meet Rika. So Kofu starts out with Veluza, going for Aqua Cutter, which is way too much damage. Attempt two, I'm gonna use Trailblaze to set up and then Terra Body Slams to do the big damage. After some setup, we finish it off with Body Slam. I really hope two Trailblazes got us enough speed. We use that Terra Boosted Protect. He outspeeds and crits, but that ain't enough. I'm terrified at this point. There's no way we one shot, right? I decide to stick it out with Oinkloin. What if we're slower without the boost? I pray for the Body Slam crit Para. What is damage? I think as a crab hammer obliterates us. Before attempt three, let's see if we can get some XP from a small child trying to speak to his uh, compadre, as he puts it. As always, we hit 100% accurate fire blast. We pick up the win easily. Everyone keeps saying we've been raiding team star bases, but all we do is beat up the first grunt and leave. You know, fear tactics on some art of war type stuff. I, I think, I, I don't read books. Let's go beat up the sushi dude who doesn't have the sushi Pokemon. So with the enhanced crit rate of Aqua Cutter and the random sandstorms, this fight is really annoying. We can do this with some good luck and apparently I don't have that. Let's jump back in on attempt eight. I use Trailblaze four times on Veluza. We take a bunch of damage to do this, but with Protects, it's not too big of an issue. I go for Trailblaze on one trio, which is not the right play, but I just wanted to test the damage. So two Trailblazes puts us in an okay spot. So this time I have a plan for Crabominable. We Protect, baiting out Rock Smash. He seems to favor second turn crab hammer. So I sunny day, meaning we survive. Now we just need a body slam. I feel really good here. When Crocolore comes out, we just will wisp and hyper voice two times. But we get the para and it works this time. So we get the second body slam and the para works again. Zero death Kovu. Winkle and Soul is a gym. What a unit. That was honestly an amazing turn of events. At this point of the challenge, we head to Medali City. I'm terrified of this section because even if we defeat Larry, whose Pokemon are six levels higher than the guy we just struggled against, we have to jump straight into a Nimona fight. Getting XP here is gonna be super tough. I still remember the answer, so there won't be any battling happening before Larry. I know everyone asked this, but where do they go? Like did the gym floor just fall and crush them? I know I'm supposed to create suspense for the battle, 
but we don't win these guys. Larry is cringe, double yawns us, and God doesn't smile on that, giving him a miss. Not that he's ever smiled on Larry. The Kamala section is going as good as it ever could. He does a ton of damage despite the chilling water, but we take it down, we're forced to switch for Dun Dun's bars, and now we watch the horrible turn of events plays out. We get paralyzed and Hyper Drill goes through Protect. I feel like I actually heard that before, but I definitely had never seen it though. We go into Staraptor with 1 HP, and Staraptor only has attacking moves. So, uh, yeah. So Larry kept beating me up, so instead I tried to find a different old man to take it out on. So Harrington is the fairy type leader's piano teacher. And more importantly, he's an old working man. So I want to pretend like we stomped this guy, but we most certainly don't. After like 15 attempts, I decide to go back to Larry. My new plan will hopefully get the job done. I have Heat Rock, Sunny Day Oinkaloid with Choice Scarf Crocolore. After countless losses, probably 20 in a row, it got so bad I started running damage calcs, which led me to figuring out our win conditions. We want to start the battle with a Sunny Day and get yawned in return. Next we bring in Crocolore on a slam and get hit. Now it's simple land three fire blast the first one hits the second also hits so decide to go with quick claw as our item let's get this raptor holy the anxiety Whoa, quick claw pop yeah let's go it popped now we have to watch this entire cutscene and pray that fire blast lands we just pray there's nothing else we can do i am so tense yeah <laughs> We did it, Larry! Yeah. So we enjoy a nice meal with this broken man who broke me. So now we are back at the gym building. I have no idea if we get to save before Nimona. We speak to top champion Gita before Nimona shows up. Please, please let me save. No, why? My greatest one is just about to be falling up with a fat L. We get healed at least. But let me go home first. My mom called. Let me leave, please. Okay, let's take out as many Pokemon as we can. I start off with a Yawn Protect Mudslap combo. The gameplay is not rewarded. We get zero luck at the start. We might genuinely get soloed by Lycanroc. After five Mudslaps, of course she hits. It was never in doubt. We take down Lycanroc. So glad this battle wasn't completely pointless for us. Gumi is just a back and forth of Dragon Pulse and Flamethrower. Another one down. Let's just finish this with a couple crit quick claws. Unfortunately, this is the end for us. I honestly don't have the willpower to beat those fights back to back. Though, I'm sure it's possible. Next, I fly to Alfernada to trigger the gym entering event. Jock gives a lucky egg, which boosts XP gain. I don't know if this is a bribe to get us to actually film the Pokedex, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Now, the lucky egg is an insanely useful item, but it also scares me because now I need to worry about one of my Pokemon holding it in every battle to optimize. It's over, Harrington. First, let me click no to make resets faster. Not that I intend on losing to you, buddy. We have Yawn Protect this time. All right, Body Slam is a two shot easily. Morgrim goes down with no trouble at all. We're in a big time level 28, and that's just 21 levels lower. This is gonna be easy. We ate a Psychic and do the old fashioned Yawn Protect. Okay, Body Slam does half. Uh, please stay sleepy, Atrum. And it does, please kill. No, so close. <laughs> All right, the strategy can work at least. All right, so instead of just hoping for a three turn sleep, I decide to use takedown. All right, a body slam hits. Now will Hatram wake up? Nope. There we go, takedown takes down. S sorry, and sorry Harrington. All right, I could go for some emotional yoga. Okay, this has to be the worst part of the game. And I don't mean this challenge. So we have two back-to-back -back battles here. In between the, the yoga, we also won't be healing between battles. We lose. So instead I'll just take on the ghost gym in Montevera. All right, so we got three battles in a row. On the bright side, it's three 2v2s with healing in between. The first battle's really easy. I just spam Snarl. Grievar falls asleep while underground and I don't know what happens next. So Grievar is just sleeping underground. Okay, so apparently he needs a turn to get above ground. Sure. Next up, we have a Haunter and a Mistrevis. They're fast, but with that curse, I now have a ticking clock on my Pokemon. So if Mistrevious Nightshades, we're screwed. All right, we're screwed. Round two, let's give Oinkloin Helping Hand and play rough. So due to curse and helping hand, we get a KO a Snarl. Also the curse hit like please, which is so ideal. Pain Split does a massive four damage into our overheat, just annihilating Mistrevis. Now Moist Critical, he scares me a little. 
His Drifloom has Destiny Bond and Self Destruct. I'm gonna use my Taro, but since Drifloom Self Destructs and Taro Fire Blast is too much, we get an easy win. Let's go. It's so nice to win a battle easily again. I really hope this is a sign of what the gym battle is gonna be like. I doubt it though, since we're gonna have a 4v2 on our hands. Now we have an amazing vocal performance. Sadly, it was cut short due to Rhyme's opponent coming up short. B bars. All this scene doesn't scare me with how long it's gonna take to reset. So this battle has buffs from the crowd. I'm gonna need to take advantage of those. We eat a sucker punch and a slash. This run seems dead. We get basically Omni boosted though. So hopefully that's enough to win us the battle. I'm thinking using Sunny Day is best as it frees up Oinkloin for more than just helping hand in every turn. Toxtricity gets bodied, which is so awesome. We take the slash and stride. Now we need to protect while breaking the skies. So it has shadow sneak, but we get an attack drop. We hit the overheat and first try the gym leader. Let's go. This battle scared me a little going in, but those speed boosts and defense boosts carried us to victory. And here he is in all its glory, Skeletor. Dirge. But more importantly is our new move, Torch Song giving us a way to boost our special attack every turn. We can also make use of the Shadow Ball TM we get right away. So Hassel comes by to compliment our strategy, and I'm glad he came to this gym instead of watching me lose to Larry 30 straight times. Honestly, I think either of the two remaining gyms makes sense for us right now, but no matter which one we choose, we'll have to face Nimona first. I feel pretty good. There's no way Nimona's beating me. Old reliable start here. I kinda wish I had play rough at this point, but I think we should be fine. Put this leg to sleep. Time for the big guy. Sligu wakes up immediately, so by the time we take it down, we're way too weak and we lose. From now on, we just need to hope we can beat Nimona's first two Pokemon with just Oinkaloin. All right, after a few bad runs of getting flinched and missing due to sand attack, it started raining. So I decided to move this battle to Glissetto Mountain, so that can happen again. Since we activated the yoga event earlier, we can still do that instead of battling Nimona. We have a ghost type now. So the first battle is just a Shadow Ball and Shadow Ball. So against Grumpig, I first turn Torch Song. We eat the Power Gem and now we can just annihilate this dude. Next, we have a normal type. So we tear up the dirt and time the Torch Song. Indeed, he is faster in Calm Minds, which is actually a little scary. We get crit and lose, so, so that's great. We don't even know if the crit matter. Here we are back at the Grumpig. I do the same thing as last time here, but he sends out Metacham out first and we just get a free Shadow Ball off. I decided to bring out the Oinkaloid, which is a problem as I realized I didn't equip Body Slam back. So I'm terrified of this thing. Of course I got two turn wake up and into a crit. Awesome, that's just awesome. Here we are in the same scenario with Raphael and his Zendidi. Hopefully Body Slam with Silk Scarf can be a difference maker. Yeah, now we get two turns of sleep and an easy win. Some good bonus XP for the Nimona battle. Battling here removes that chance for rain. No more tricks to carry her this time. I'm running Miracle Seed just to test if we can one shot with Seed Bomb. We can't, so leftovers it is going forward. Okay, Oink is not beating Sligu this time. We bring in Dirge, Terra Torch Song. Torch Song Shadow Ball isn't even enough. I'm seeing some different wind conditions though. Spark is 48 damage and a boosted Torch Song is a one shot. This run is obviously uh, d dead. Maybe she has mercy, no. So we make it a palm out with a very healthy team. Now I'm not confident a Torch Song is enough. We're just gonna have to land a clutch fire blast. He goes for a thunder wave, honestly a terrible play, but it pays off. We take the damage of a spark and being paralyzed, just not how I'd expect it to happen. Okay, Torch Song better be enough. This thing has zero bulk, plus we're max special attack. Slash is doing nothing and we get our win on Nimona. More painful than it should have been, but I'll take it. Time to celebrate by doing some totally tubular minigame. Wow, that was epic. All right, I'm gonna try to be Grusha. Our strategy is called Torch Song. I will be making adjustments as needed. Matt, I love Grusha's design. Frostmoth is the freest Torch Song ever. We outspeed Beartick. Satitan, same deal. This is exactly what I needed. The only way I can see Grusha winning is Hurricane confusing us into a self hit. Except we just outspeed. He, he had no chance. We take a nice picture with a beautiful man and get a TM that serves no purpose in this challenge. We meet Rika and a prodigal preschooler. 
She really puts the four in Elite Four. You think that's like the gimmick in Paldea? Like every year they have to swap them out when the kid turns five? Next we head for the school to net 35 medium candy and five large. Next I finish the little support slash confidant stories with a bunch of the professors. Finally, here's team member three. By talking to our language teacher, welcome me out. We can finally battle Team Star bases after getting seven gym badges. So using all the candies brings us from level five all the way to 56. And I decided to reset the game. It didn't really register to me how much XP we'd get from the candy. So I'm gonna hold off unless I'm really hurting. This Meowth also has pickup, so we could probably abuse this, but again, I'm not gonna do that. I do really wanna get this Meowth to a usable level. I have some cool stuff I've been planning. Let's finish out strong and beat the last gym leader, Tulip. We're on par with her level wise, but well with one of our Pokemon. Strategy is Torch Song on Giraffe Rig, then spam Shadow Ball. It'll use Crunch first turn, but it's neutral and not stab. That defense drop shouldn't come into play. Now let's test our speed. Two down, a spot throughout speeds, knocks us down to below half as her ace floor just comes out. She goes sparkly, but that's only to my benefit. She hangs on with barely any HP, lands a psychic, weed it up, and finish the battle. That's two straight first try gym leaders. This is why I chose Fue Coco and experienced all that pain. She compliments my awesome default character. Listen, money is very tight, okay? Don't judge me. With that, we speak to Gita and Nimona. All this path has left is the Pokemon League. So let's ignore that and go beat up some level 20 Pokemon. You might be wondering, am I gonna add 30 to my counter at the top? A absolutely not. I'm not referring to this walking simulator as 30 battles. Those sections are gonna be really annoying later though. Doing that for every reset is gonna be so miserable. On the bright side, let's annihilate this dude. Two Torch Songs and we're out of here. What? The car? Shocking! How many hours into this run am I? This is the first time we faced one of these. Okay, his rev room outspeeding me is kinda crazy, but like, so what? We get tragic backstory. Clive shows up and hurts this lost soul. Coincidentally, Penny shows up as soon as Cassopeia hangs up. So strange. Anyways, next is the firebase. We have a brief chat with Clive. He points in a direction and I now know who I need to slay. Let's just cut to Mela showing up. Seeing me be up her team is something she'd have trouble walking away from. Though I don't know what she'd have an easy time walking away from. So yeah, we win this battle, believe it or not. And Flame Charge could come in handy later. Yeah, doing all three of these in a row is really formulaic, but we don't have much left to do besides these bases. So here's Atticus on his awesome unique car. The poison type car choice actually makes sense. It's like toxic emissions, but why the fairy type and fighting type cars? So his first Pokemon is Skunk Tank. Wow, lose. Yes, this is another easy battle, giving us five straight first try victories. Time to get back to the challenge part of this Pokemon challenge. So Atticus gives up on Team Star to play imagination games with his eight year old best friend. And then our dog licks near Penny, all in a day's work. Why don't we break up the monotony by challenging the false dragon titan? We happen upon a big Tatsugiri saying Titan and click on it before big guy eats it and we start our battle. We dodge Aqua Tail, putting it to sleep for free. Time to deal some seed bomb damage. Wow, that wasn't a lot. But that Aqua Tail does do a lot. Maybe he'll miss. No? O okay. Let's try again. We outspeed and will o this time. He goes for a water pulse. D did he just predict me? This did no this dot doze was kind of snapped. I was really impressed by the damage until I saw that that was a crit. This thing using water pulse sucked. New strategy, yawn into sunny day. We eat two water pulses, switch to Cockalore in the sleep turn, and then boom, blast this thing with a solar beam. Do half, it stays asleep, not that it mattered, and one more finishes the battle. All right, I expect the second battle of this to actually be a pretty big challenge, but let's see what we can do and how much Arvin can carry. This guy was already pretty scary before it got its stat boost. We protect the first turn. Best case scenario here, Arvin tail whips though. Uh, ne next turn, Arvin gets targeted and we get a burn off and some damage is dealt. I protect, nice, nice, predictable as always. Let's get our son up. We are messing this dude up. 
All right, solar beam time. We do a ton. We're gonna get out of here with a full HP skeleton. All right, time for battle three. Armin is back to full. Let's go. We get a free heal. It icy wins, which is fine by me. Tatsu is already the fastest Pokemon here. We get our sun up. It keeps icy winding, which is fine. Even with the crit protect leftovers, got our backs. Did not deal a lot of damage that turn, unfortunately. Wow, it's a 1v1. This sucks. Muddy Water miss, let's go. Wow, Muddy Water damage. I needed that miss. Yeah, we don't win this. The rain is just that cherry on top. He is really being nice to us here, though. But I should have had any other move in this situation, like Body Slam or Player Up. He taunts us instead of just finishing this. A Player Up there would have been so good. We can't protect anymore. We are toast. Another Icy Wind miss. He finally lands the Icy Wind. We shake up the taunt. Do we, do we protect here, or, or do I hope he taunts and finish this? This turn decides a lot. I risk it, and it doesn't pay off. Man, we're just gonna cut to Tatsugiri. All right, back to Tatsugiri. I've opted for Shadow Ball instead of Will-O-Wisp, since the Dundozo portion is pretty easy anyways. So Tatsu misses both of us, getting up a furry sunny day. This Giri is just throwing. We get some Shadow Balls off, eat some Icy Winds. He keeps using Taunt. After taking some damage and stalling some turns, we protect. I switch to Oink. I protect. And Greedon takes down itself in the Tatsu Giri. Thank you. You will be missed, soldier. Time for our final footlong with the bros. I actually really like this scene. Like, if I ever had a pet in my life, this scene would go crazy. After this, we go to the lighthouse to meet up with Armin, where we first met. Honestly, I want to say it feels like yesterday, but this run took me forever. So at the lighthouse, we meet Cave Lady through FaceTime. She asks us to bring her book to Area Zero. I'd like to believe that this is her way to ask Armin to visit her, since she's too embarrassed to ask straight up, but she probably just wants her book back, I'll be honest. So now we have our final goal, but first let's finish off the Path of Legends with probably the most infamous battle in this game. So let's see how we do with an average level of 38. Let's go see if we can beat up Arvin's sick dog. We can't. Let's just go beat the grunt in front of the fighting base to feel better. So like, did anyone else think we'd see Eri without the makeup in her flashback or concept art? But no, she is committed to that makeup. I was honestly hoping that battle would give us more XP than it did. At least it was easy. Let's do the fairy base. I have a strategy in mind, but it's kind of super RNG. And when I have to face 30 grunts beforehand, uh, I'm sure that's fine. Let's just get our lucky first try win against this guy. All right, start off with landing a sink. Time to torch song his team, hopefully. Wakes up, but is just a charm. We land another sing. We get a nice plus three in a Pokemon too. Wigglytuff, all right, it's a nice one shot. It's fast and we can't use Torch Song. And we also miss, let's protect for some recovery. Another miss is just awesome. All right, we get our sing off, easy peasy. Now please stay sleepy or just get obliterated. Let's see how much damage we can do. The car to steal roller, that's crazy. What a terrible decision. Boom, damage. We protect and I'm feeling good. Confused Ray is not something I want to get hit with, but he does it again, and at least we're charmed. But who cares? First try win. I really thought this would be like a four to five attempt thing. We get our flashback, we learn about the power of friendship, and how hard work is more important than money. You know, typical poor person propaganda. Let's head for the final Team Star base. Let's hope the battle against Aerie is another easy win. So we're gonna abuse the AI here. This Toxico really wants to use Sucker Punch, and we really like missing, but we finally hit a sing. Take down Toxicroak, then we flinch, and the run is dead. We got smoked in attempt two, but taking down those 30 Pokemon every time gives me plenty of time to think of a strategy. So now we're rocking Substitute, Flamethrower to set us up, and I'm also going with Charcoal, so hopefully that'll help. Okay, so I get past Toxicroak with plus two speed and plus two special attack. So now let's Terra on this Lucario and get another boost for our troubles. Thanks, Passimian, for another boost. We're plus four headed into Annihilate. Yeah, this is a one shot. All right, plus five for Remoroom. Let's see if we can just win this. We outspeed, so uh, yeah, this battle's over. There we go, nice win for us after a little workshopping. So Cassiopeia reveals she's the mastermind? 
How could I not see this? It was hiding in plain sight, right under our noses. It's high time I finish things. I head to school where I see my good friend Clive, standing in front of the main entrance. There's, there's, there's no Clive? It was a disguise, it was always Clavel, and he claims to be Cassiopeia of Team Star? I'm in shambles here, guys. All right, we missed Sing, but we got it eventually. I think two Flame Charge, two Torch Song is what we need. He yawns, we miss, eat a foul play, hopefully reflects, no. Then he Dream Eaters, this, this sucks. We Terra, wake up, let's just cry it, please? He Dream Eaters though, let's go. Three health and a dream, How Doom comes out. But you might have noticed, I got a move for this. Earth power, easy clap. Let's go, Torch Songs from now on. Another one down, sorry Mr. Teapot. Pokemon 591? I don't like your chances. Oh, snowstorm. Wait, wait. The hail doesn't exist anymore. Let's go. Uh, ice shard. Okay, surviving an ice shard shouldn't be too hard. Let's try this again. I only flame charge once this time. That's all we'll need. All right, back to Obama Snow. Now that we have full health, I don't think things will play out the same. Okay, we are back to the Quaquavo. So I'm plus six this time. At plus six, we, we still don't kill. Wait for it, boom, focus sash, yup, this one cost me 50k, and it was worth every penny. <laughs> so Savile Plot can wait, our baby boy is growing up. Welcome to the Team Berserker. All we have left for this path is the final battle. First things first, we need to train our dirt. He is now the perfect Pokemon. Time to beat Penny, spoilers. So we head to the schoolyard and meet a mysterious figure. I don't know how, but I immediately know this is the person behind everything. All right, enough's enough. Let's beat this dorky kid to her insane battle theme. We miss this thing as we do, eat a dark pulse. Let's actually Terra and play smart this time. There we go, bedtime for you little guy. So she seems to be going for baby doll eyes, which no surprise to anyone who's played this game. Okay, one flame charge and one torch song down. Let's see if we can knock it out. We cannot. It wakes up and does another dark pulse. I decided to finish it with Torch Song instead of Flame Charge. Our speed should be good enough at this point. Okay, Vaporeon's out next. Probably our biggest threat. I go for Sing and Miss. Awesome. Round two. We're back at Vaporeon with some more HP. As you'd expect, we land our Sing. So, let's Torch Song first turn. Yes, stay sleep, Vaporeon. And the Shadow Ball easily finishes it off. Okay, Jolteon. Yeah, you're dead. One shot gets the job done. If Lyrion survives this, we need to nerf this thing. <laughs> okay, thank god. That Pokemon's dealt with enough. Leafeon, uh, what did you expect? Alright, things look very good. Yeah, I don't think this Terra is gonna save you. And with that, we have beaten our first path, Starfall Street. Can I just say the scene of her looking out of the window so funny? This is some mid-2000s show aimed at teenage girls. I enjoyed the Starfall Street path. Piecing together the story is really easy though. Uh, just like this path was in this challenge. Don't worry guys, the real treasure were the friends we made along the way. Roll credits. Now we still got some battles left, so next Penny admits to embezzlement, and then we meet up with her one last time before the trial. To be fair, she stole like 48,000 LP, which is equivalent to polka dollars, aka yen. So she stole about like 370 bucks. So like still bad, but I think she'll be able to pay it back. So there's our nice end screen. We've kept Arvin waiting long enough. We are now six levels wiser going into this battle. My new strategy is perfect. We start with the return of like, please. We outspeed, yawn this green it, nice body slam nerd. We eat those. Now time to switch in on Body Slam. Oh yeah, Pokemon Master coming through. First, let's Flame Charge. We do lose Blaze, unfortunately, but that'll be fine. Next turn, let's Sunny Day. Okay, Wake Up is scary, but your damage is trash. Tour song time, goodbye, Squirrel. Oh, Garganical, sorry, buddy. I'm a different beast this time. One shot this salty batch of rocks. Next up is Toad Squirrel. We outspeed Easy Clap. Good night, Mushroom Man. So Cloyster is screwed. Is this your king, people? This is the hardest battle in the game? Sorry, Scovillain. Maybe you should have sent that out when the sun was still up. We about to give this man's dog a well-baked body. Enjoy your little animation while you can. Good night, Mavastiff. Good night, Arvin. Yeah, this plan worked. 
I think we might have been able to do this earlier. So there we go, Path of Legends complete. All that's left is the Pokemon League. And here we are. We speak to Gita, then it's time to enter. We get interviewed by Rika. It's nice to talk to someone about the pain Larry caused me, but also talking about that battle makes me anxious about what's next. Unfortunately, I do like Pokemon Rika, so I guess we pass. It's time to get the battle started. I've saved. I was worried too because that traps me in here, but either I win with what I have with me or I lose the challenge. All right, up first is Rika. First, I set up the sun. Earth power hurts, but we take it out with our solar beam. Dawn Fountain goes down real easy. Oh, sturdy. I don't feel discouraged because it was very much a test run. Okay, back again with the temp three. We take a nice muddy water and return with Yawn. We sunny day. Forget the protect, time to bring in Dirge. The easiest solar beam of my life. All right, now we just gotta land our sing. Pitch perfect. Time to raise our special attack. Yes, stay sleep. Get towards song. All right, as long as we don't get one shot, we're good. It goes for Sandstorm anyways. No more solar beams could be bad, but we torch song camera up and one shot. So never mind. I don't know, I guess I expected more from it. I at long last, the ace comes out. Now, if this thing was unaware, I'd have a reason to worry, but, but nah. First, a Leaf Four member down. So next up's Poppy, the fantastic four-year-old. She uses steel types. I don't expect this to be hard. So fun fact, Elixir is worthless in this game. Relearning a move completely recovers its PP. So you can just forget a move and relearn it. So that was probably an oversight by the developers. Let's ground this four-year-old. I'm probably not gonna use my ground type moves though. I wonder if her Corviknight and Tinkaton get along. Why am I not talking about the battle? Because it's already over. That could only have been described as bullying. Wow, very cool Poppy, awesome hat, now it's gone. Two down, two to go. Well, 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 look who the cat dragged in. It's not gonna go like it did last time, buddy. All right, time for my revenge. Ugh, roasted bananas, don't mind if I do, Larry. Oh wow, look at the star after. Oh, didn't I? One shot. Yeah, yeah, I did it again. I'm gonna be real, Larry. You playing real bad right now. Your next Pokemon might have been your only chance of winning. But now that I have all these boosts, this hyper voice, yeah, yeah Larry, yeah, you're, you're terrible, dude. You call that damage? That was your crit? Bring out your last pathetic Pokemon so I can end this. Cool bird, GG's Larry, we both play bad, scrub. I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. I, this, his, I lost like 30 times to this dude. Okay, number four ought to be more of a challenge. Dragon Trainer Hassle. Oink me boy, let's teach him a lesson. So we play rough, take half, hit him with a yawn, go all the way down to four, take our protect turn, and bring in the big guns. I've been rocking Lucky Egg for this entire Leap Four, and I don't think that's gonna change. Yes, yeah, stay sleep, big man. We boosted out here. Get a torch song off, and that should be the end of this bad guy. Okay, next is Dragology. Best known for its special defense, and it has Hydro Pump. I'm singing, we hit, which is perfect. This guy is not getting one shot, so let's use it to boost. Next, Torch Song should do the trick. We are boosted out here, out of this world. Plus three Hyper Voice is very slightly stronger, and it works. Well, I mean, Fla Flapple, you never had a chance, did you? We're in a very fortunate position. Let's hope this pseudo doesn't have a disgusting special defense or HP stat. Baxcalibur is really cool, but it's just so bald, which is pretty inspiring for a guy like me. Oh my god, we are going to die. Oh, we are, we're we bulky. I'm so glad I didn't click Torch Song and trigger its ability. So we kind of just beat all of the Elite Four in one shot. Now, I lost to Rika twice, but it was smooth sailing after that. But there's one last roadblock for us. Time to take on the Paldean Champion. On the roof, we are met by Gita. Regarded by the fans as one of the weakest champions and considered to have a really bad team. But look guys, she doesn't know how to hold back. I'm clowning on her, so if we lose, it'll be embarrassing. I've gotta raise the stakes somehow at this point. Cool, Lumina crashed this bother, go to sleep. Oh, we're gonna have to eat another. Fortunately, she has more physical attackers than special attackers, so it doesn't really matter. Her spother actually outspeeds, and that's never gonna change. So, so you're sending Avalog out, okay. Ma'am, you have a water type. Okay, send, send more fire weaknesses out. I can still lose this, but let me talk. All right, the loser, enjoy Torch Song. Sorry, sorry, you let me cook. Why'd you let me cook? 
<laughs> You're trolling, Gita. Do anything, please. So I'm a little scared since I didn't bring Earth Power and our special defenses, Lord. We probably lose this, but, but whatever, I guess. Eat Torch Song, fool. Oh, I, I didn't bring Earth Power and it just didn't matter. We, we really did that on one straight shot. Uh, we get our flowers and celebrate my Skeledurge for being a broken Pokemon. Can everyone say thank you, Skeledurge, in the comments? Thank you, subscribe. Guys, it's time to take on Champion Nimona. With everyone in attendance, let's try our best to not get stopped. So our Oink is no longer the Oink you guys knew. He's maxed out. Setting up rocks, how cute. Bedtime, doggo. Alright, time to unleash the seed bombs. Yes, it was all thanks to you, Nimona. You helped create this monster oink -aloin. All the way back, it was just a Lechonk. Okay, I really wanted to send Gudra out next, but I guess not. We're eating double shocks, people. And missing our sinks. Having to resort to Ice Punch is crazy, though. I think we should be fast enough now. I don't know why you thought Earthworm was the answer, but thanks, I guess. So now we have the problem. Okay, sweet miss on Sing and we lose. All right, attempt three, we are back at the Gudra. Time to land our, uh, attempt five, we are back at the Gudra. Time to land our, okay, are you kidding me, man? How many times until I land this one sing? Attempt seven, we finally land our sing. Now, please don't just wake up. Perfect, Hex with the boost is gonna one shot. All right, next up is the Dunsparce. I am not the same crocodile I once was. We really did six extra attempts because I couldn't land that one sing. Okay, let's see how fast the cat is. I'm guessing not fast enough. And wow, uh, that really would have been a first try if I didn't miss. With that, we've done it. The three paths are done. It's kind of nice that winning this battle didn't come easily. Victory road complete. Time to head down to area zero. Time for the last stretch. We meet up at the zero gate. Arvin gets pushed to the side by his mom. You know, story of his life. Time to jump off this cliff. Can I just say Arvin is a beast for how he just manhandles the player character? Like, that's crazy, right? Someone power scale this feat for me. All right, welcome to the probably the coolest area in a Pokemon game since the Distortion World. So it's really bright in here. So Coridon decides to go back into his Pokeball. Wh why, did, why did I write? He's literally a lizard. So we reached the first of the four laps where we were attacked, giving us a recreation of how Nemota became champion. The mono one-shotting this thing is so funny to me for no good reason. We disable the first lock. Let's head further down. Shout out to Arvin for just spilling his guts in this section. Judas only had a dying dog to talk to for the longest. In front of Lab 2, we meet a cute little guy, Screamtail. The first Paradox Pokemon we've encountered. It's a 9 on 1, so uh, yeah. We spot an old foe in front of Lab 3. Last time I beat this guy when we were 20 levels lower, so yeah, we beat the brakes off of him. As always, Arvin Clutch. We dive deeper into the crater. This area is really cool looking, conceptually for sure. We reach Research Station 4 in ruin. Sada seems to bug out, glitch out you could say. Well whatever, let's head to the Zero Lab. So Sada calls us, telling us opening the lab will unleash more Paradox Pokemon. So before pressing the button, we let out Coridon, where we proceed to watch my boy just get dominated by a second one. We're just watching him get bullied. Which, according to what I was told growing up, makes us worse than the actual bullies. So now let's deal with the herd. Our third great tusk of the run. Puts up more of a fight, but yeah, it goes down. Next up, funny guy. Brute Bonnet. I don't like your chances. Please enjoy this song. He puts the threat Umbreon to sleep. Intelligent place. Last, <laughs> you could even say 300 IQ. Last up is Fluttermane. Let's just Terra to lose our ghost typing and hit it with a hex. We meet the professor who seems to sleep with her eyes open. K kinda weird, dude. She also casually shows her Master Ball. Little humble flex there, buddy. So as you guys know, this is Robot Cave Lady. Real Cave Lady is dead in this kid's game. So we need to turn off the time machine, and she can't because it's against her programming. Time to take the elevator and make some awkward small talk. Oh look, here's my stop. To disable the time machine, we'll have to beat AI Sada as she's programmed to prevent anyone from stopping it. She also has the knowledge and data of many Pokemon champions, as well as a pretty good team, I'd say. Time for the final battle, and one of the coldest cutscenes in Pokemon. Like, this goes hard. The music kicking in, and the way she catches the Master Ball, so smooth. Also, the way she throws the Pokemon. Nah, they, they did a good job with this. 
I love Slitherwing, but you're getting cooked. This right here is gonna be why your descendant chooses to be a Fire-type Pokemon. I feel like I made a mistake terrestrializing so soon, but if I lose, I'll definitely clean that up for next time. Brute Bonnet is next. I'm sorry, this was never gonna work. Sandy Shocks is out and I feel good. One Torch Song does the trick. Fluttermane is just a speed check more than anything and we passed that test. Bye bye. Screamtail, I'm gonna be real, you not doing nothing. Last up, we have Roaring Moon. One of the coolest Pokemon. End of sentence. We outspeed E plus 5 Torch Song. He hangs on just to miss Stone Edge. <laughs> yeah, full out on all my mods. I'm so sorry, guys. This was so anticlimactic. This was kind of embarrassing. The gang shows up. Arvin meets his robot mom, who's kind of his mom, kind of not his mom. I enjoy that about this scene. So the AI has one last trick up its sleeve. All Pokeballs except for Sada's are disabled. This battle intro goes crazy. Like the effect on the text is so clean. So Dirge has done enough this time. Our party member number four is about to take the stage. So this battle is basically an interactive cutscene to finish off the story. But I guess so was the battle before this too, huh? After a few turns and some power of friendship, our Terra Orb charges up and we finish this battle with a Terra Blast. How fitting, a move we never use in this run because switching Terra types is stupidly time consuming. And that adds the last number to our battle total. So 62 battles, quite a bit honestly. Before my closing thoughts, let's see Arvin's mom leave him one last time. After she adios on her kid for the sake of the world, let's get out of here. If we're leaving anyways, we might as well enjoy the way back home. So uh, this was a really fun run. I think this was a nice way to kick off the channel. If you enjoyed, subscribe. Well, later.